Anakin, you know, kind of duplicating the Luke Skywalker role, but you see the echo of where it all is going to go. And instead of do destroying the Death Star, he destroys the ship that controls the robots. Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. The statement by George Lucas is often memed due to the infamous Plinkett reviews, which I now consider a dishonest character assassination of Lucas, as well as gaslighting the audience. There's nothing inherently wrong with the statement, but when viewed through a cynical, ironic lens, isolated from context, it's placed within the review to make George look stupid. And I will be fair here, so it doesn't seem like I'm putting Lucas on a pedestal. Lucas does come off as timid and unsure in many of these behind-the-scenes interviews, but honestly, can you blame him? The Phantom Menace was possibly the most anticipated film of all time, so there was a lot of pressure on him. Lucas's lack of confidence and certainty comes off badly, but I'd argue that someone full of themselves, who had no doubts whatsoever, would have produced a far worse film. Cough, cough, Ryan Johnson, cough. Now, as for the actual statement itself, what does George mean? By poetry, he means the content of his art. By rhymes, he means it repeats. The content repeats. Simple as that. What is the content, and how does it repeat? I'll start with the dialogue. I'll compare the dialogue of Revenge of the Sith to the original trilogy. This is outrageous. It's unfair. It just isn't fair. That wasn't much of a rescue. You're welcome. Some rescue. Thanks to you. That's two you owe me, Junior. <laughs> well, you owe me one, and not for saving your skin for the tenth time. Somebody has to save our skins. General Grievous, you're shorter than I expected. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? There's good in him. <sighs> because there is good in him, I felt it. I know many people won't be convinced merely by references, but it's not just that they're references, it's what these references represent. For example, Anakin calling Grievous short isn't just a nod to A New Hope. It also shows that Leia and her father have a similar sense of humor. And both Padme and Luke sense the good in Anakin, and are very hopeful. The Skywalker children take after their parents, making all these characters in the whole saga more in-depth than in either trilogy in isolation. And this is just scratching the surface, as the prequels are also indicative of the eternal return. What once was will come again. History repeats itself. It is cyclical. Empires rise and fall. The fall of Rome being parallel to the fall of the Republic in the prequels, even down to the pod race mirroring the old chariot races of Rome, and of course the gladiator arena in Attack of the Clones being analogous to its Roman counterparts. And that's not even touching on the political corruption and societal decay, which is what the prequels are really trying to capture and reflect. If you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend checking out Rick Worley's YouTube channel on this. Despite whatever differences in opinion we may have, his videos are very in-depth and actually inspired me to make this channel, so just thought I'd throw that out there. Going back to the eternal return, it is a concept that Nietzsche wrote about. In Nietzsche's writings, funny enough, he actually once uses the term Star Destroyer, which I couldn't help but think was a bit funny. <laughs> I mean, I just picture the fact that George Lucas might have actually read Nietzsche, which is something that's interesting to think about. In fact, a topic for perhaps another video Star Wars references a lot of literature, particularly in the prequels. A lot of dystopian stuff like 1984 and Brave New World, for example. Right. I'm much more of the 1984 kind of guy. Sure. I am. THX 1138. Maybe out with the spaceship guy. Yeah. George Lucas has even said in interviews that Star Wars has always been about being anti-authoritarian. You know, we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And we're just a bunch of hayseeds in that's, coonskin hats that don't right. know nothing. That's right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in in both of those, the little the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical em the, empire. The English Empire. Right. The English the empire, empire, the American Empire. Yep. Lost. Yeah. That was the whole point. <laughs> it isn't the science aliens and all that kind of stuff that I get focused on. It's the, it's the how do the people react to all those things? And yeah. How do they accommodate them? Yeah. So that's the part that really fascinates me. We 
Lucas finds the social commentary of sci-fi more interesting than the actual science fiction elements like robots and aliens. I think this is best showcased through the prequels. So this is how Liberty dies. With thunderous applause. Ironically, I think many of the original trilogy fanboys are the exact opposite. When they say that there is too much politics in the prequels, what they're really saying is that there's too much social commentary in the prequels, and they would rather just watch the Millennium Falcon blowing up some TIE fighters. Now, there isn't anything inherently wrong with that, wanting to just see spaceships blow up other spaceships, I mean. But the problem comes in when, when the prequels are hated merely for not being the original trilogy 2.0. Or worse, the subtle, well-done social commentary of the prequels is compared to the piss-poor so-called social commentary of the Disney films. So, Star Wars as a whole, but especially the prequels, are essentially one giant collage of history, covering everything from war to literature, social commentary, cinema, and art itself. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew, then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. I hope you now understand the poetry of Star Wars and how it rhymes. You can make profound statements using and repeating content in a new context. The prequels are deeper films than they get credit for. I hope you too can see this. There is more than appears on the surface.